Hi, Hugh Taylor here, and today we're going to talk about one of my favorite slash least favorite topics, which is public relations and book promotion. And I'm going to offer you three tough lessons that you'll be happy to learn, or at least in my view, you should be happy to learn. So let's get started. A quick overview. This is uh, Roddy Dangerfield, one of my favorite uh, comedians and actors. And the look on his face uh, captures kind of how I feel when authors ask me about doing public relations for their books. Uh, sometimes I, I feel a little bit uh, stressed out by it. Um, public relations can be an integral part of a successful book promotion. And of course, if you look at major books that come out, there's, there's always a media campaign that goes with it. Authors go on a media tour, they get booked on talk shows, they get interviewed in the press, the book gets reviewed and so forth. Uh, but it's not easy, especially for, for books that are not, you know, particularly notable or by people who are not well known. So public relations is not always the best idea for book promotion. And this video, we're going to look at, at why this is the case. Now, you might be asking, why am I telling you this? I'm in the PR business. I make money when you order my services. When I write a press release for you, I make money and so forth. So shouldn't I be selling you? Your PR should I be selling you, you know, PR services to promote your book? The answer is that's not really how I operate. I, I'd rather not work with you than sell you something you don't need, something that will fail. And this is not because I'm the nicest person in the world. I mean, I am, of course, but it's mostly because I want to avoid situations where I know there's not going to be success and there's going to be disappointment. I'd really rather not do that. So I don't want to be like, oh, I took your money and I failed. Goodbye. Um, I have colleagues in the industry who have no problem doing that. That's just not the way I like to work. And, and I'm sorry, I, I'm, I'm an author myself. I know how much work it takes to write a book. I do not mean to be negative or discouraging. Okay, I want you to be successful. I just want to help you avoid buying services you don't need. That's the point of this video. So let's talk first about the ideal. How does PR work ideally in book promotion? Ideally, you know, you work with a public relations firm or a publicist. They get your book reviewed in the, in the in news sites or on television or radio. You, the author, get interviewed in the media. Uh, you, the author, become a, so a sought-after expert source for stories that are about what your book is about or about the amazing story that you told in your work of fiction. You become an on-air guest as well. And you get to plug your book in the media. Now, if you listen to the radio or watch TV, you see this all the time. People are constantly, authors are constantly being booked on radio and TV. They get interviewed in the press. So you think, hey, why not me? Well, let's talk about that, okay? Lesson number one, buyer beware. The book promotion field is full of dubious services. Now, when I say that, I don't mean things that are fraudulent, you know, but they're services that don't really help and they don't really tell you that. So, for example, I'm just making this up. You'll see an ad on Facebook that says, you know, learn how to become a best-selling author by buying Facebook ads. Okay, so you sign up for that course and that costs you, you know, $500 and you then start to spend, you know, $5,000 a month on Facebook ads and you're not really selling any books. So what happened? Are they, did they cheat you? No. They offered you something. They, they gave you what they said they were going to give you. It's a fair deal, except you don't need it. Or it's not right for you, right? Vendors tend to prey on your vanity and sense of ambition. And I, I'll give you an example. My mother uh, is an, also an author. She writes books about horticulture. Her books are a little obscure they're about things like, you know, the history of rose breeding in medieval France and that sort of thing. Whatever, I'm kind of making that up. But sort of, you know, things that are not exactly, you know, major bestsellers. She gets calls from these services. Oh, we love your book so much. For $14,000, we can promote it. We think we can get you a bestseller status. Guess what? They can't. And if she, if she went for it, she'd be wasting her money. Some services are suitable and many are not. So you really need to develop a sense of what's going to work for your book and what isn't. 
Part of the problem, in my view, and I say this as an author who is subject to all of the same insecurities and dreams that, that a lot of authors have, is the book promotion field is a toxic stew of motivational bullshit. And I'm sorry for the language, but I can't think of another word that's better for that. It's just book promotion just seems to be a nexus of motivational and self-help garbage that preys on authors' weaknesses and desires. You know, because part of it is writing. There's a lot of um, emphasis in the industry on writing your book as an act of self-realization. And yes, of course, writing a book can be an act of self-realization. It's a heroic story of how you finally got down and wrote your book and congratulations, it's incredible. But they're going to they, they tap into that sort of sense of, well, now I get to be famous, right? Promote your book as a step in your career as an entrepreneur. And you see ads with pictures like the one here, like with money, I'll turn you into a best-selling author or learn how to become a best-selling author or learn how to sell thousands of books on Amazon. You know, how rich do you want to get? All, preying on all these like sort of um, negative uh, weaknesses in the same way that, like sort of like the weight loss industry or the beauty industry preys on people's insecurities. And I really don't like it. And I do not want to be a part of that myself. PR services often fit into this pattern. I get asked so many times, I mean, every week, many, many times, you know, I've written a, a self-published children's book. I want to be reviewed in the New York Times. I want to be on Good Morning America. And I'm like, I'm really sorry. I mean, maybe someone, I can't help you. Maybe someone else can. There are amazing book publicists. I mean, that's part of this too, just to be aware. There are some extremely good book publicists. They happen to be expensive, but they may be, able to, may be able to do things that I can't do. So just take this as my perspective, as someone who works in PR, that there are problems with the book promotional field and the way they prey on authors. Because, and this is my second lesson, and this can be the hardest lesson to learn, and it's one, I'm saying this with you, not to you. It's a lesson I've learned myself. I'm an author. I've written 14 books. One of my books is called Digital Downfall. It's about cybersecurity and its effect on American politics. Okay. Th this is a book. I mean, I thought it's great, right? It was not really promotable for a lot of reasons that I learned. And I won't get into all the reasons, but there was not a good fit. It had to do with the fact that the topic was a little too complicated for the news media. Um, and I didn't have the stature to promote it. This is a very significant issue. You may have written the most interesting book in the world. If you are not notable or famous yourself or have some credential to write your book, it's very hard to promote. So here I'll give you my, I'm a good case example of this. I am very knowledgeable about cybersecurity. I've written about it for many years. I've been worked in the cybersecurity industry. I know what I'm talking about. However, I'm not a retired general or four-star admiral. I'm not a former employee of the National Security Agency. I have very little credibility or credentials as far as the media is concerned to talk about my book in the news. I ran into this also. I was given an excellent book to promote in the press about overcoming childhood trauma. The author had experienced trauma and written about it. I got uniformly rejected by the media because I was told this author is not a psychologist. We do not take books about, we do not put books on the air about a psychological issue unless the author is a psychologist. End of story. That was a very difficult lesson for this author and for me as her publicist, but it's one that I want to share with you. Okay. And what I want you to do, there's a thought exercise that goes with this. Think about how people, including yourself, actually buy books. How do people, what makes someone go into a bookstore and buy a book? What makes someone go on Amazon and look for a book? What makes someone choose a book on Amazon if they see it? What makes someone uh, read about a book or hear about a book on the radio or something and then go buy it? Okay. Is that, does your book fit into that pattern? Because uh, and I'll give you an example, and this comes up a lot. Many speakers and self-help type of personalities, people who do seminars and that sort of thing, write books about their thing, right? 
those books almost always get sold in the back of the room, meaning that the speaker has a crowd of people, he or she gets them all excited about what they're, whatever they're talking about, like let's lose weight, let's start a business, let's buy real estate, whatever it is. And everybody's all fired up. And as they're leaving the speech, there's a table where they can buy the speaker's books. And there's a very high impulse buying pattern. You might sell, you know, 500 books in a day. Okay. 20 minutes after those people leave the, leave the building, they're not going to buy your book ever again. You could call them the next day. Hey, you want to buy my book? No, thanks. It's a momentary thing. So, and that's amazing. I, my hat is off to those people who sell books that way. However, if they do a press release and try and get booked on the radio and try and get in the newspaper, it may not work. And even if they do, it may not sell the books. This is just a really important thing to keep in mind. Okay. And then I want you to do another thought exercise. What kind of books actually get covered in the media? Okay. And there's usually a, there's a couple different kinds of books that got covered in the media. But first of all, what kind of books get reviewed? If you read the book review, the New York Times book review, for example, you will generally see books by extremely famous and established authors, you know, like Stephen King. You'll see books by very respected and established literary authors. You'll see nonfiction books by important people. And you'll see some like sort of you know, new and interesting books from new and interesting authors. That's the books. That, those are the books that get reviewed in major media. And if you're one of those kind of people, that's amazing. I mean, I know you're probably not going to be working with me, but that's great. And those people often have very good and expensive publicists, too. And book reviewers, if you think about this, I mean, I want you to just think for a minute. You ever look at Amazon at a sort of an obscure book and you notice that it's like number five million on Amazon? I want you to think about what that means. That means that there are five million books that sell better than that book. So if you're just, and then think about what, what it's like to be a book reviewer at a major media outlet. You're getting deluged with requests for reviews. I mean, every day they probably get two or 3,000 queries about books to be reviewed. And I'm not exaggerating. They get flooded with review requests. So they have to say no 99.99% .99 of the time. So what are they choosing? If you have written a self-published children's book, I'm telling you, there's almost 0% chance that it's going to get reviewed. Now, that doesn't mean you can't promote that book, but I'm just saying, if you're sitting there saying, like, well, now I'm ready for the New York Times, you're going to be disappointed, I'm pretty sure. Does your book fall into a category that gets covered in the media? But alternatively, if you, if you look at authors who get interviewed as sources in the media or who get booked on TV, they are usually either already famous, like they're like, you know, created some famous diet or, you know, invented some famous invention or something. So they're, they're a promotional draw for the media outlet or their expertise is so well respected that they are, they are like a bonus to the media outlet. This is something that you have to kind of put into perspective. Are you adding to the media outlets, you know, prestige and credibility or are you, or are you trying to take advantage of them? So, you know, if you are like a highly credentialed person, like let's say you're a doctor who won the Nobel Prize, just to kind of get a high example. Well, of course, if you've written a book, that's very promotable. They want to have you on TV to talk about your book. You know, if you're a doctor who nobody's heard of and you've written a book, well, you're at least you're a doctor. So there's that. But you're it's you're still facing kind of an uphill battle to get to get notice. You have to really work to get notice. Okay. Now, with all this in mind, and I'm sorry if I'm being discouraging, I'm just trying to be realistic here, there may be a promotional fit, okay? Sometimes I suggest not doing any PR for a book, as I've said. Other times, we can find something to work with. And these include things like, you may have value as an expert, source, or a guest. You have to figure out what that value is. There could be a special niche audience. This is important. Like, so for example, you know, I was working with some people who had written a book about a very rare disease, but a very, very tragic and serious disease. So there was a way to find a fit. People who were interested in the story, there were reporters who wanted to talk about it. We could find a fit there. Could be an interesting local story. This is a often overlooked thing. You know, uh, 
you know, communities, local stories. Like I had success writing about a book that was about a certain neighborhood in an American city where they, and they had a signing at a bookstore in that neighborhood and I got local press interested. So they got coverage. That's a good story. That's the kind of thing that can work. Um, or is it a story that aligns with a bigger story? You know, this is, you know, reporters are looking for, they want to do stories about things that are important. So for example, you know, if you've, if you've written a book that has relevance to like the COVID pandemic or something, something you have something unique to say about it, well, there are people who are covering COVID even still now. It's a story that comes up. So maybe you can fit with their with their story. And, and good reviews help. I mean, this is something, you know, if you can point back to, you know, an Amazon link that has, you know, 100 five-star reviews or something, then you can... Um, you can give some credibility to yourself. And lesson three and a half, which is sort of a coming back to some of the themes we've been discussing, which is this is a famous expression in the PR industry. It says it's the hook, not the book. Okay. When you want to get, when you want to get booked on television and radio or get uh, mentioned in the press, what's going to get you on the air is the hook. What's hooking the audience? What's hooking the journalist to talk to you about? Literally like a fish hook. What's, good, what's going to get them on the hook? Okay, the book itself is really secondary. So for example, let's say you've written a book about weight loss. Well, if, if a radio station wants to put you on the air, they want you to talk about weight loss. And then they'll allow you to plug your book in the process. And if you listen to the radio or watch TV, you will see this all the time. It's always like, here's this interesting guest who has something interesting to tell you. That's the hook, you know, like how to lose 10 pounds in 10 days. That's the hook, right? And during the interview, they'll be like, and by the way, she wrote this book and then you get to plug your book. Okay. It's like an, it's like a transaction almost. You give them some interesting stuff to put on the air and they give you a free plug for your book. Okay. So the trick is to have a great hook. And this is something that we can help you figure out if you have a hook and what it is. Okay, so we're here to help. We have a great free ebook called Stop Being Invisible, which may give you some ideas about how to do this. There's a link to get it for free in the description below. And maybe we can help. We're commsfactory.net. And thank you for being with me today. I know this wasn't the easiest conversation, but this was just like one of these tough talks that sometimes you have to have with people so that they'll figure out what they really need and get the right services for their book.